Hello and welcome to this feature spotlight video on Test Runner for virtual commissioning in Emulate 3D 2025. I'm Andrew Diebold, the product manager for Emulate 3D, and this video will hopefully give you some ideas on how you can apply structured testing to your automation logic. This is going to supercharge your testing of PLC code and robot programs and supervisory logic, etc., by creating reproducible and automatic tests that you can run at any time. These tests could be for happy path, standard operation, or they could stress test the system, perhaps injecting operator interactions and device faults to check safety and alarms and diagnostics. As you'll see, Test Runner is going to help you perform more comprehensive testing that's impractical or impossible to do on site. You may be hearing excitement around terms like modern industrial DevOps or CICD. This is a key part of that story. To oversimplify a bit, you can imagine applying version control to your controls code and to your system designs. If you haven't already seen it, check out the feature spotlight on our new Git version control feature within Emulate 3D to see that part of the story. Then, whenever an engineer makes a change, they can automatically run a series of tests to ensure that the system behaves as they intended and that the changes didn't introduce unexpected problems. This iterative process of design, then test, then design, then test, it's common for software development and has huge benefits. Testing early and testing often produces more robust code. You can then apply those same tests after the line has been built, massively reducing the risk of future code tweaks or system upgrades. So here we've got a version control model, which I've already connected to a few PLCs and robot controllers. I've checked that my IO maps up, I've checked safety feedback on my HMIs, I've dry run motors, I've tested manual functions. I've verified and even tweaked the positions of some sensors, and then I've run an idealized cycle on auto. Everything seems to work. Let's continue by testing some e-stops and restarts. Let's test our first zone. We're going to run a skid through this turntable. And we'll wait until the turntable's part way through rotating the skid before we hit the e-stop button on our interactive control panel. There we go. So this is good, our system stopped correctly. We're getting the, the warning on the stack light. If we retract our e-stop and hit our start button, we see a problem. And the problem is that our power roller bed restarts <laughs> way too early and our skid's gonna go tumbling off into the floor, which is not ideal and a very expensive problem. So what would we do now? We would go and rectify our controls code and we would retest. But often it's really hard to replicate the exact set of conditions, the edge case that caused the problem to occur in the first place. So let's try to do this with Test Runner and we can reproduce the exact same test case again and again. Let's make our first test. Let's use the internal Test Runner rather than the standalone Test Runner app. That standalone app has all the same features and allows you to run tests without actually having the Emulate 3D user interface open. But in this case, we want to see our tests running in the background, so we'll use the internal app. We actually get a test already filled out for us to get us started. This is under the test scenarios, where a new group has been created with a first test entry. Let's make use of these. We can rename our group to be zone 060, and if we wanted to have batches of tests for the other zones, we can add new test groups and organize our tests accordingly. Let's go and take our first test, which is being applied to this model, and edit the test. We'll call it uh, stop on turntable. We can choose a scenario type. We can either use a scripted test where we can use c -sharp scripting to define our test, as you would have seen in previous Spotlight videos on catalog unit testing. Or we could do an action test and we can use the user interface to create our test manually, which we'll do in this case. We can then choose if we want to reload our model fresh with each test. We don't need to in this case. We can set a run speed. Uh, in this case, we're going to co-simulate by connecting to Logic's Echo, so we'll run a little bit faster than real time. And then we can set a test duration, in this case, two minutes. Now here's the fun bit. Let's go and define model actions which will take place when we run this test. We can add and edit actions on the left-hand side here, or just directly from the test. 
So let's rename this action to uh, e-stop on the turntable. Great, that's also auto-filled for me. Let's add a new action which is going to set a property at a certain time. At about 17 seconds into the model run, we're going to hit the e-stop number one in our model. And we're going to set its property e-stop pressed to be true. This is great. Now, let's check that everything has actually stopped. And we could do this visually, or we can set up an assertion, which is going to do this check for us automatically. So at 20 seconds into the model run, we better hope that our SDA4 parallel bed and turntable property state is going to be false. And if our turntable is still turning when we hit the e-stop, that is a major problem. So this is a high severity assertion. It's going to fail our test. We'll see explicitly our test has failed. It's actually going to stop at that point. It's going to not run anything else and just say that we failed. We could run a medium severity, which will log that there's been a major problem and the test has failed, but the test will continue. Or a low severity issue, which will just put a warning on the test to say that there's been some unexpected behavior as well. Let's copy this, and let's also check that our PRB, our power roller bed, is also stopped. We probably want to give it a little time to stop, and then we should probably restart our line like we did in that manual test. So let's copy our first action, and then speed up this part of the video to add another property setter to restart the line, and a few assertions to check that the turntable restarts, and then a few seconds later, the conveyor restarts when it's the correct time to transfer onto the next roller. Now, let's dock our window. If we drag it, we can choose dock locations. And I actually like to have my tests running on a second monitor, but over the right-hand side of the screen is fine for now. We'll go back to our test, which will be set up. Uh, we need to save our project, which is going to save out our test configuration files. So let's go and save our test runner project. Let's run our test. Now watch that e-stop button down in the corner as that action pushes it, stops, and then restarts our system. And our model actually stops before the skid even falls off because we've identified a failure condition. We can see that the power roller bed has started too early. And we can see this if we play the model, continue the test on, and we can see that, yep, Controls car fails, and the skid's going to fall onto the floor. Okay, so let's fix this. Let's go away and fix our controls code and come back in a second. Let's give it another run. We're going to run the individual test scenario here, directly from that line. We hit the stop, exactly the same time. Restart, exactly the same time. And we get the desired behavior. We see that our tests pass. So this is great. We can now work on the next part of our logic, and we can rerun this test at any time to just triple check that this turntable can stop and start correctly. And we can reuse these tests to test stops at other points in time. Here we've got a small suite of tests that hit that e-stop at awkward points during the cycle, including transferring over to the next zone. Let's set up one more. And we're going to create a new set of actions. But rather than having to create a lot manually, what we can do is we can base a set of actions on other actions. And this is going to import and reference those other actions and allow us to create derivative tests. In this case, we want to stop 44 seconds in, which is roughly when the skid is on this can lift table of the next zone, almost completing its transfer off 060. And as a nice tip, we can actually open up a new view window. Which we can use to watch that panel in a bit more detail. Okay, let's run our tests. Now that we're running a suite of tests, we need to reset our controller state between test runs. Now if we're running individual tests, Emulate3D actually lets you run your deployable code without any adulteration to make it simulation ready. 
There are a lot of unique capabilities within Emulate 3D to allow this. For example, with device emulation, that's covered in another feature spotlight, we can connect and test without having to inhibit any modules by satisfying that SIP class 1 connection. Or when co-simulating with Logic's Echo, we can make use of Axis test mode. However, note that when we're running a suite of tests, perhaps even from that standalone test runner, then we would need to send data to reset our controller state. The emulation helper component is ideal for this. There we go, another issue caught virtually and one fewer catastrophe on site. Test runner pairs beautifully with Fault Framework. This is a set of aspects which you can apply to any visual, which override and force a property value. For example, it could force a proc sensor so that it never sends a signal when blocked, representing a device failure or an electrical disconnect. More advanced faults can represent sensor drift or a frozen signal or a mechanical failure like a valve stalling. And as with everything inside Emulate 3D, this is all heavily extendable to represent whatever fault is required. You can think of faults as more advanced property setters and they can be enabled via the test runner. The fault framework also comes with aspects and controller-based assertions. These can be edited and snapped together to make more intelligent checks on your model. For example, rather than a one-off check of a property state, you could instead check that a process goes through the right steps in the right order, or maybe that nothing ever falls on the floor. Fault Framework can be used by itself as another tool for manual testing, or it would become part of your automated testing with Test Runner. It's also ideal for operator training. You can throw challenging scenarios their way and test that the operator is able to resolve them correctly using the real HMIs and control logic. Test Runner allows engineers to run their automation controls against scenarios that are impossible to replicate in the field. They can run these scenarios repeatedly and consistently before the system is built and for future updates. Test earlier, test faster, and test deeper. Now, Test Runner doesn't need a connection to a PLC to run. It can also be used to test simulation layouts against each other or to run automatic model optimizations and for unit tests via catalogs and scripts. To hear more, check out our other Feature Spotlight videos.